Hello, I'm Harrison Flores, and I'm here with Libya and RBA. We're at the VCU campus, and we're here in the, in the student commons. Uh, if you want to know anything about Bitcoin, uh, you should talk to me. Check us out at liberatorva.com. I'm Derek Davis, I'm a Stoic philosopher, and I'm also an anarchist. And I'm Cal Molinay, also from Richmond, Virginia, here to spread the message of freedom and, of course, spreading anarchy to end the state. And I'm Rachel Ritter, also an anarchist, and the Liberate RBA Freedom Gathering this month will be held at my house on the 27th. We'll be uh, analyzing communism, so check it out. So with that, see you guys at the Rick Party and take good care. Right. And at the same time, government has even found it to more violence because at no point he said, you want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. You have no freedom of economic choice. You still have to give me your money. You still have to give up your property. You still have to pay your taxes. Right. Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice of what you do with your own money, government wouldn't threaten you to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. See, I think that there is a problem with the people that get into government, the people that get into being police officers. I feel like the people that get into that do it at some sort of, not 100% of the time, but my personal experiences, when I get uh, in trouble with a police officer, someone who's in higher power, mm -hmm. they want to exert their control over me. It's not like, hey, you messed up there, like, this is what happened, all that. It's like, very serious, they're mad at you, they're trying to control you, so it's almost like they're dealing with their problems emotionally instead of very logically. Yeah, exactly, especially in areas that there's no victim, right? Yeah. How, can it, how can there be a crime that's there's no victim, right? Uh, so like, and that's a good point that you mentioned, you're mentioning because like in Chesterfield County right next door, they have a quota, 270 people, they have to issue traffic citations, extortion tickets. They there also, it's mandated to also ar yeah, arrest, kidnap 90 people a day. Uh, mandatory each and every day. So, and they're looking, and that's how they're funded, right? I mean, so, and at the same time, the Supreme Court has ruled that they have no obligation to protect you. No constitutional duty to provide you protection of your life and property. So how do you feel then about being forced to pay for a service in which they don't even have to provide? Yeah, I mean, I guess you could look at it like it's an outdated system. I feel like all that, all those sort of laws were put in order when the United States was a lot smaller, more of a local level. So I feel like now it's, I feel like things need to change because power isn't being mandated where it needs to. I know this is getting kind of yeah, abstract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, thought, but, but so that's, that's where we need to go. Though. Right, so like going back to the first three questions, right? In your day-to-day -day life, you don't use violence to solve your personal problems. You have, in fact, a plurality of non-violent solutions. And as we come to see government, though, this organization only knows how to solve problems, though, through violence. Through the threat and use of violence is even funded through violence. So it has a single solution, one solution. Yeah. And that's using violence to solve the problems, the threat and use of violence. And so if we remove, so what is government then uh, objectively? What government is objectively it has a monopoly, a violent monopoly on the services you and I want. I want security, right? I want to feel secure, I want to feel protected, right? right. Uh, unfortunately, they have a monopoly on security. You don't have the freedom to cancel and subscribe as you would any other business service. Say, hey, I don't think you're providing me security. I'm going to cancel and subscribe. I'm going somewhere else. You don't even have the freedom to compete entrepreneurially in order to say, you know what? I can provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. Yeah. Right? Same thing with laws, right? So government has a monopoly on laws. You didn't give consent to these laws. Where's their contract with, these, with this legal system, right? Doesn't exist. So you would have services to, to offer dispute resolution instead of this monopolized one where the court, where the judge can say, I don't like what you're wearing, contempt of court. It's like, what are you doing? I'm paying your salary, right? You're, yeah. you're supposed to be serving me. Yeah. You should be standing when I walk into the room. I agree. All right? You know what a fucked up law is? What's that? That you can get a DUI on a bike. <laughs> now, I want to I wanna get that taken back. You get a DUI in a car for good reason, because you can kill someone. You can get drunk in public for walking. At least give us a bike to get around. All right, so it's a good point. Now, now here's, here's it really a, grinds my gears. No, it, it grinds my gears too. Because the thing is, so they're going to say it's, uh, it's wrong for you to drink and drive. Okay, then can I walk home? Sorry, that's public intoxication. What the fuck? It's like, where, where am I supposed to gotcha. go, right? I got gotcha. you. Yeah, but so, that, so let's, let's kind of break down that claim then. Now, what you have in your body is not a crime. This is your body. What you do with your body is no one else's business, right? Yeah. But government is making a claim ownership over your body, saying you're not allowed to put such and such substances in your body, right? So, for example, the only way they can tell if you committed a crime is a breathalyzer test. But so far, you haven't hurt anyone, right? Mm -hmm. The focus should be on actual violence, if you've actually aggressed against someone. Not what's in your blood. Not what's inside your body. That's another way of control. That's another extortion scheme. 
right? Yep. That seems like, well, we can get them all for drunk driving. Even on your bike? Oh my God, have you heard of any anyone getting caught on that? Uh, I haven't, but it's always a thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, an uneasy thought, I would imagine, of riding around knowing that you could get, right? Exactly. Yeah, kind of like driving around this in is, a car. This is supposed to be a safe option. Right. <laughs> yeah, or a walking is supposed to be a safe option, yeah. but no, public intoxication. So how would you define freedom then? There's too many ways to define it. I how mean, would you define it? How would I? Yeah, what does that mean to you? It's more of a, a feeling than something that I can say. Uh, like freedom to me is the, a feeling you get when all your options are open. It's not, it's not all those options, because those are separate things, but it's that feeling inside of you, knowing that even if you have nothing planned, that's okay, because you can make it out, because you've got the freedom to do whatever you want. No, I like that. That's a good one. Free freedom to, to do anything you want, right? As well, long as it doesn't aggress against other people. I don't, I don't people. like to say it's like an option or like something tangible. It's, I feel like it's more of an emotion, right. the way I think of it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you will find then how government strips away those options from you. Like the freedom to ride around in a bike if you want to be drunk, right? Uh, I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so what government then has is a monopoly on, on a community in Richmond, uh, in uh, Virginia. Instead of having thousands of competing communities catering to your lifestyle and preferences, two rules to actually give consent to, like moving to apartment complexes, this cat's not allowed, one across the street, that is, right? Yeah. 420 friendly, not 420 friendly. Have these different rules, like, hey, this is a whole community, nobody, everyone here rides on bikes and they get drunk all weekend long, right? That's the rules we give consent to. We have a real contract with that. Uh, so I guess that's essentially what a free society would look like, based on consent. Yeah, but I don't think you can totally do that. I don't think that... Yes, what? You can't be on either end of the spectrum. Uh, why could it be? Because then when you're inside of that, you're looking at too many things individually. Like, okay, so those are the apartments that like to get drunk and ride their bike all yeah. the time. And those guys aren't. So what do you do if you're in between? Just like, I just want to be a human. I think that we're, on a fundamental level, getting away from the base, which is that we're all just fucking animals, you know? We're, we're just humans, so if we start making all these decisions and organizing it very nicely, which is the way it's done now, mm -hmm. just, it just doesn't phase us, but just, just like stop organizing everything. So like, okay, if you're like that, you go there, if you're like that, you go there. It's like, well, I'm like, don't put a label on me, I'm, I'm just Andrew. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just doing me, you know? I like that right. house, I'm gonna go live there, like all that. I, that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. I mean, then everyone's going to fit anymore. And for you, so you know what? None of the stuff uh, provides what I'm looking for. I'm going to create my own community for all the other Andrews out there who kind of, who are maybe uh, misanthropic. Yeah, but or I don't friendly. even want a community for all the other Andrews. I just want to... You can have your own. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. So it's the freedom of association and disassociation, right? Uh, so you can have, like for example, you go to a mall, I don't know where they're from, I don't know what religion, I don't know what sexual orientation, it doesn't matter, I'm looking for like uh, the next sale, I'm looking for like, you know, discounts, uh, and everyone congregates there at a mall, right? And you don't see really infighting or anything like that, even though they have a lot of clashing preferences. So you have their in-between gray areas, uh, except like at the end of the day, I think it's maybe one goes to a golf course community, because they love golfing, the other goes to maybe their uh, 420 wild community, and then one goes to where they don't like cannabis at all. But at least there's no one monopoly majority opinion on what it should be for some to the minority. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I agree with that. I just don't think that we should put a label on it. Oh, yeah, it doesn't have to be a label at all. Yeah. That's why it's just called a free and voluntary society. Okay. Whatever they want to call it, call it whatever you want. Right? Yeah. Uh, there's, that's, as long as it's consensual. Right? That's yeah. all that matters. Right? Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm Cal Mullen. Andrew. Andrew, pleasure. I got some pamphlets you would like. Um, uh, so it's pretty much so what, what's up with this whole okay. thing? So it's pretty much for uh, Liberate RBA. It's, uh, an, it's a non-political organization. So it has nothing to do with politics, nothing to do with Democrats, Republicans, or even the Libertarian Party. It's trying to move, find our solutions within our community, outside of government and politics. And, in, uh, and in this route, that could also be called like free market anarchy. Like uh, in science, anarchy is called like uh, anons and canons. An means without, archy means rulers. Like in this context, political rulers. Like monarchy means one political ruler. Uh, anarchy meets without political rulers, politicians who are strangers you've never met who can best decide how, how to spend nearly half your income, right, without your consent, right? And so that's what you would have. You wouldn't have nearly half your money stolen. You'll have that in your pockets. You'll have a lot more. Uh, 
opportunities, economic freedoms to do what Tao what will, as long as it doesn't aggress against other people. You know, in, in a free society. Yeah, I mean, they really bring it home. Yeah. Aristotle said that we need rulers to rule the passionate masses. Without one ruler, not even one, without someone saying what can and can't be done, you got all these passionate people with all these crazy ideas. Maybe we're pretty level-headed. There's a lot of people out there where if you give them, like, if you just say, hey, no rules, then... Well, we're not saying no rules. We're saying no rulers. No rulers. Right. We can have I'm rules. just saying it's a, it's a thin line because although maybe 75% of the population would be fine living on their moral value, mm -hmm. uh, you still need, people need direction. It takes a long time to figure out who you are and to live a good life without direction. True, this, this will take some time. That's very true. Uh, so I, I record these interviews that I have with people, and so you'll find that you're not alone with the same thought, because they also want to feel that there's other people who feel that they don't need political rulers, that they themselves can abide by the non-aggression principle, right? Now, that it's wrong and immoral to initiate force against anyone, regardless of what your title or color costume okay. you wear, right? Yeah. So we have like over 150 uh, individual interviews. So 150 people here, over 150 people here in Richmond that agree with this, that's not bad to start off with, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, along the years we grow, like you know, several thousand people, you know, we find a measure of success. Look, it seems like we all agree that we don't need the government, we don't need this violence, we don't need these taxation or these politicians. We can kind of voluntarily have a spontaneous order that's consensual, that's voluntary, yeah. right? And that, that may take some time, that's very true. Um, and that's what we're kind of out here to do, trying to find people who have that moral integrity and uh, start connecting with that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And uh, this is for his own fellow. Uh, Andrew? <laughs> Andrew? Okay. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. So that's the hidden violence, that's the immorality of government, that this organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's to the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, versus though the plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I already share. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on that? I think I agree and uh, it goes deeper. It does, it does. Obviously. And, and we can go, yeah, but, absolutely. And we can talk about it for hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but I agree, in, in a lot of cases it, it is uh, violence. Right. In some cases, there are a few cases where there isn't violence, but a, a majority, I'd say. Right. It's, there's violence somewhere. Right. Yeah. There, there's violence along the line, especially in the fun, in the funding of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, oh, you mean taxation is not voluntary. It's not consensual. Mm -hmm. Right. They want to say they're providing a service. Well, if they're providing a service, do I have the freedom to cancel or unsubscribe as I would any other real business service? Mm -hmm. Right. Do I have the freedom to compete entrepreneurially against their services mm -hmm. that they've monopolized? Right. Mm -hmm. Because I want roads, I want security, I want law, I want uh, to my mail. Mm -hmm. But they have monopolized these, these services and they outlaw and make criminal criminalized competition. So like FedEx, UPS, and DHL can only deliver packages. It's criminal and illegal for you to deliver pieces of paper, mm -hmm. right? But every time you have a monopoly, the cost goes up like the rise of Stanford, mm -hmm. property taxes, and quality depreciates, right? Mm -hmm. You'll be hard pressed to find a clock at your local post office because that's how they solve the problems of long waits in line, mm -hmm. right? As long as no one knows what, how long they'll be waiting in line, that's, how, that's our solution to yeah. it, right? Uh, so that's really what it is. So, in, so in, in a sense, in the absence of a government, absence of a state, you have a free and voluntary society. You have thousands of competing communities catering to your lifestyle and preferences. Rules that you give tacit, explicit consent to, right? Uh, like you have no contract with government, yeah. right? Uh, you have no contract with the police. They don't even have to provide you services, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what, what, what we will find, right? Uh, a free market society a, uh, or a free market anarchist society uh, or a voluntary society, right? Whatever they want to call it, right? As long as it's consensual, as long as it's voluntary, right? So how would you define freedom? Well, uh, the freedom here is partial freedom, right? Uh, some of the stuff we're allowed to do, but the government, there's still, there still has to be some uh, rules established by the government for us. That's, that's what's, yeah, and we so, can have rules. Yeah, I think that's, it's better for, for rules because some people, they'll decide they don't want any rules at all and they go their own way, a way that's not, that's like psychopathic or something. Sure, sure. And then, but, that, yeah, and that'd be good for us then, mm -hmm, right? Those yeah. are the one rules, at least we know the ones that don't and they're not but, part of our community. But, and like, Further, there are some rules that go too far. Right. Uh, all right, all right. But you would want to give consent to these rules, would you not? Mm -hmm. Like you would like to see. Well, here's a new rule. Like if you move, like here's an apartment complex that's 420 friendly. One across the street that's not, you know. But these are rules you give consent to, and you agree to the consequences, right? 
Unfortunately, you don't have an agreement with the monopoly on rules the government has, mm -hmm. right? So we can have rules. We just don't need the political rulers, the mm -hmm. politicians, strangers forcing you yeah. to accept I, I don't agree with uh, a lot of the politicians. It's we somehow elect. I don't. I don't even see that my voice is like heard. I feel yeah. like I'm not. I'm not part of anything. Right. And then the politician goes and speaks on my behalf with something that I don't agree with at all. Right. And even if I tried. What you know? What's the point? Right. Yeah. They, they still people, they still choose what they want. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, majority mob rule over your voice, mm -hmm. right? Over the minority, right? Uh, so we're part of a non-political organization. So no politics whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We're mostly trying trying to turn to our community to solve our problems and turning away from government altogether, and trying to you know try to create a society based on consent on on first principles, right? Mm -hmm. um, to the non-aggression principle that if it's wrong and immoral for for you and I to initiate force. It's also wrong for anyone else, regardless of what title or what color costume they wear, right? Uh, and that's, that's what we do. That's what we call ourselves, Liberate RVA. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, my name is Cal. I'm glad you found a few minutes to, to yeah. stop by. Uh, let me provide you some more information if, uh, right. before you leave then.